So let's start. Uh, why people actually do the cosplay stuff? Why do we create the costumes? Uh, I've met many cosplayers and from different countries, different nations, and usually people start because they used to do some artistic stuff before. They used to sew, they used to paint, they used to sculpt, and then they, they are geeks, and they also discovered the cosplay thing, which is getting more and, popular, more and more popular every year. And then they decided to actually put the character they liked from the design into life. Uh, which is really nice and their works are usually amazing. There are also people who actually just like having fun at the convention with friends and some of these people make the costumes by themselves. Uh, usually they're comfortable and uh, it's nothing bad to buy a costume. It's also, it's also part of the cosplay. Um, what's next? Uh, there are also people who really like to perform and since the cosplay is getting more popular we have the cosplay contests almost at every event in every country so it's a possibility to uh, go on a stage and make the show. Uh, it's also for people who love the role play so, it, I'm so hot, it's so hot, I'm sorry. Um, so if you like the role play, if you like to perform in front of the audience, it's really a nice opportunity to, uh, to show your skills, to feel like the character. Uh, so you don't need to be a professional actor, you just, you're, uh, you're new, you're, you didn't, never experienced that, but it's something you will probably like if you, if you think you like acting. Um, what's next? Um, people do the cosplay stuff because uh, most of them uh, played the games before or watched the movies or the comics and then they uh, decided that this uh, particular character has an amazing personality and they identify them themselves with this character. So uh, they decided to feel like this character to uh, do the role play and just dress as this character and go to the convention. So if any of you has this, these reasons to cosplay, already did cosplays, uh, I think these are the most popular reasons why people do it. And how to start? I will tell you a bit of my story and uh, maybe you will take an, a bit of uh, advice of what I will say. Um, when I started cosplay four years ago, it was the moment when it was getting more and more popular and there were already many uh, things on the internet, but many conventions also at my city. So uh, attending the conventions helped me to know more, to meet more people, to share experience with them. And actually the practice makes uh, everything better, so uh, don't be afraid to take time. Okay, now the more technical stuff. Uh, there are many materials we actually use for cosplay. One of the most popular on, of them is EVA foam. Uh, and we had the, pa the panel about materials some time ago, maybe some of you attended it. And we basically talked about thermoplastics and EVA foam, which are the most popular materials. Uh, and uh, just to talk short about this, EVA foam you can usually buy on the internet, but also in art shops, in small uh, sheets, uh, we usually the most often use um, two millimeters foam, three, five, and ten, and sometimes more. Uh, other material is our thermoplastics, uh, which you uh, use with heat gun, um, and you form the shapes. And sometimes you can uh, connect, mix these two materials and create uh, more complicated structures. Uh, the thermoplastics you can only buy online because this is really not that popular uh, material for uh, other people, just for the cosplayers and for artists. That's why you can buy it on the internet and there are usually there are no stores uh, in the cities like offices. Um, okay, um, now I would like you to, if you have any idea about the cosplay you want to do, uh, to think about this costume and I will try to explain you how to start step by step to make it. Um, okay, I'm, I will start to... Uh, I'm sorry, it's so hot. Basically, uh, what you need to do if you want to start the first cosplay is to choose the character. Um, 
sometimes people do their own creations, own designs. That's why you need to f have an idea about this. But if it's a character from a uh, game, movie, or comics, you need to find as many reference pictures as it's possible. So if there, it's a game, try to find the, uh, to the screenshot from the game or find models online. And uh, you can, so you can see the character from every perspective. Because when you will make your costume, you need to know how each piece looks from different perspectives. And it's important. So you will uh, later be able to make the pieces more accurate. But sometimes it will also help you to find a solution how to attach pieces to your body. So we will see the belts and other things. Uh, what's next thing? If you chose your character and you have as many pictures, reference pictures as possible, it's important to collect materials to be ready to start making it. If it's costume made mainly with fabric, you of course need sewing machine and matching uh, fabrics, which you can find of course in a fabric store. Um, for the patterns of the uh, clothes for the cosplay, you can sometimes use uh, patterns from the internet. Sometimes you can buy uh, books or, or kind of um, magazines with patterns of some of the clothes. But you can also use your own clothes to draw on fabric, uh, the one of your clothes, for example, a t-shirt or something similar, and use, use this pattern to make the piece of costume. So this is the sewing part. Um, what's next? If you want to make the armor, it's, um, you need a bit more tools and materials. Because usually for sewing, you of course need the sewing machine. And actually, I use sewing machine and scissors. That's all for me. And about the armors, you for sure will need heat gun. You will need many types of the glues, depending on which type of types of materials you will glue to each other. Um, the most popular is hot glue. The other popular one is contact glue um, and super glue. Uh, the other things uh, that can be useful uh, are, of course, scissors, some cutters to cut the really thick foam and to cut out the details. Uh, there can be also useful hot glue gun for the hot glue. Um, and also the pyrograph or more complicated tools like uh, airbrush. Then, when you have the materials, you should think about your own safety, which is really important, because some of the paints or, uh, for example, the cutters can be dangerous. So when you use the cutter and of maybe sometimes really sharp scissors, it's important to protect your uh, hands with the gloves. Uh, what, what's more, um, you also, if you are sending something, because I also use sanding tools for the foam and for the thermoplastics, uh, you will also need uh, the gla uh, glasses and the mask uh, for the dust, anti-dust mask. Uh, and it's important to not to let the dust from the foam and thermoplastics, to, to not to breathe it, breathe it in, because uh, it's just really not healthy. Um, what's next? Uh, if you collected the sending tools and the things for the protection, oh, and if you, if you paint, uh, you will also need the, you can use, for example, old clothes that you will never wear again, so you're not afraid to make them dirty, but you can also buy a specific, uh, let's say, suits, like white suits for the work uh, in construction shops to protect your clothes. Um, next important thing, is uh, to collect the materials, which I, as I said before, uh, for the armor are uh, VA foam and thermoplastics the most often, and for the mm, sewing costumes are uh, many types of the fabrics, which you can find in the fabric store, VA foam in the art shops online, and thermoplastics also online. Um, the next thing is, will be uh, atten your attention to details and trying to find uh, things that will help you to create details. Some of the characters on the armor have gems, so you can find like glass gems in some of the art stores uh, or let's say other um, details also in art stores, also in um, the fabric store. So it's important to collect the details. Some of the costume have uh, 
like details that you can uh, really make out of uh, normal, out of home articles. For example, I once made a Mad Max cosplay, and uh, the Immortan Joe originally has the uh, things from the bottles, the top of the bottle, I don't know how to say it, from the beer. And I just used the real, uh, this uh, covering of the bottle uh, in my costume. So sometimes if you'll notice uh, on a costume details that you have at home or that you can use from real life, you can just put them on your cosplay. So when you collected the materials, you have the tools, you have the fabrics, if you need them, you, you have the patterns, you can start making it. And um, basically, I really often get a question, OK, I have it, and what to do now? I will not come and like, hold your hands and do everything for you. So it's really important to try, to try, try, try every time, because for sure, it will not be perfect every time and uh, at the beginning. So it's really important to, uh, to try to make it by yourself once or two times at, at the moment when you will be happy out of it. And uh, what I did when I wasn't experienced in sewing, I asked my uh, members of my family for help. For example, in my family, my grandma knows a little bit about sewing. So when I had problems sewing the dress, I just asked my grandma to help me. And she actually did. It was so nice and I learned something new. And so at the beginning, it's important to have someone who will really help you at your work. Uh, and now I'm actually not having a help from anyone, and because, but I remember had advices and that was really helpful. And if you don't have friends or family who's, who knows how to do sewing, for example, or paint job, you can also watch the tutorials on the internet, on, on the internet which are really important and helpful. But as I said, you can also try, try, and try, because at some moment, you will, if you will do different things, you will notice that one of them is the one, what, what, what is what what you want to have. And um, next step is to start creating your cosplay, uh, which basically is a really complicated process if you're making it for the first time. And um, what I want to say is that uh, for many people, I have questions like how to have motivation, uh, or I'm too lazy to make it, and other stuff. Uh, for sure, for me, it's motivational the, seeing the work of other people, and I really admire them. I follow them on social media, I see them at the conventions. So even if you didn't do the cosplay, like, like you never did the cosplay, you can go to the convention, see other people, and I don't know, I feel like it fills me with the energy, it fills me like with the ideas. So it's important to find your inspiration, because inspiration, having the inspiration for the first time is really helpful and will make your work more, um, more interesting and you will be more happy with the results. Uh, so, for example, following other cosplayers is really nice. Uh, what's next? Uh, if you don't have the motivation from the... It's very, like, like, too lazy. Uh, I can't do anything to, my, to that. You can try to find your hours of work, like if you prefer to work during the night, if you prefer to work in the morning, if you prefer to work after the dinner or something. It's important to find your favorite time of the work, and it's important as well. Um, what's next? Um, really, uh, I think uh, matters what you, um, what you want to make, because if you want to have the perfect costume, perfect details, for the first time, it's hard. So I always say that if you want to first, if you want to create your first cosplay, try to choose something simple, really, every time. Try to something simple, because it's easier to make good quality costume with the simple, co with the simple character than like really big, complicated armor with many tex techniques that you never tried. So uh, if you try something simple and you will see the nice results, you can try more and more complicated with time, it's going to get better. Sometimes I know cosplayers who are uh, like professional seamstress 
and then they started doing cosplay, and they're suing cosplay, their perfection. But they can't do armors, for example. But with time, they will be able to. Um, so it really depends. If you feel, if you painted as a, in a high school, in a primary school, you will feel better probably in uh, painting your armor. Uh, what's the easiest part and the hardest part for you? All of it. <laughs> Everything, what? Oh, just all of it. Oh, <laughs> come on. You, actually, you did the nice weathering on your chest because I've seen many pyramid cosplayers and they usually are clean while the character, while the character wasn't clean. So this is what is uh, important you. and yeah, it's good. Um, what's next? Yes? Yeah, so where do you find the patterns? Do you make them or is there any way I can go and get them? Like online? A again and a bit louder. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Where do you get your patterns for making your, your costumes, your props? Do you get them online or do you make them your own? And if, if I have to make it on my own, then how do I do that? Patterns. Yeah. Oh, uh, some of the patterns you can actually find online, for especially for superhero uh, cosplays. You have already done patterns for the foam uh, of superheroes, like for the Thor helmet, for Captain America. So for the really popular characters, you can find some of the patterns on the internet, which is really useful. But uh, sometimes, and especially for characters that are not popular, it's really hard and you need to make it by yourself. Uh, how I make patterns? Um, basically, it all starts from measuring your own body, because if you're making something for yourself, you need to know uh, what's, uh, what's the size of your hand, what's the size of your head. So you need to measure uh, the parts of your body. And then I usually uh, try to look at the picture on my phone in a nice perspective. Sometimes I need to scroll the other pictures to see different perspectives. And I try to sketch the nice shape. And for that, I usually do it on newspapers because there I have them a lot, like old newspapers, and I'm uh, not afraid to waste the paper. And so just with black marker, I sketch, and then I cut out the piece, and I check if it fits my body or not. Uh, you need to also remember that um, you have to add sometimes five centimeters or less to adjust it uh, to the thickness of the foam. Um, oh, also another way to make nice patterns, if you can't really, like, if it's complicated and you can't draw it, like, straight from your head, it's, uh, for example, when there is a female breastplate, it's actually really, uh, it's like a 3D thing, so it's hard to, like, draw it flat. So the easiest way, for example, to make it, but also for the other parts, is to wrap yourself with uh, like um, clear foil for the food that is used, and then cover yourself with, uh, also wrap yourself with uh, paper tape. And then you have actually kind of, let's say, armor on yourself. Then you can stand in front of the mirror with the reference picture on your computer or print it on your phone. And then you look at the picture and you're drawing it on yourself, I mean on the paper tape. And then you cut the thing till you take off and you have flat, uh, flat pattern which you can cut out. And then, for example, for female breast breastplate, you have two uh, cups for the chest and one, uh, one stripe. And then you cut them out, you glue together and here you go. It's, I think it's the easiest way to make pattern for someone who never uh, did it and who, who doesn't have uh, the like, imagination how can it look when it's flat. Because usually when I do the patterns, I try to imagine uh, how it will have to look the piece when it's flat after I will heat it up and form it like the pauldron, for example. But it's also, everything is the experience. So I, I wasn't like knowing everything from the beginning. I just noticed something. Oh, if I will use, uh, if I will cut out like triangle here and glue it together, it will make like more round shape. So um, 
this is all experience and um, I always make first uh, patterns out of paper and then transfer, transfer it to the uh, EVA form or Wordla and then uh, cut it out and form. Because drawing it straight on foam and, cut and trying to make something out of it can destroy your foam and you will just waste the nice piece of foam. Uh, so yeah, this is how I make patterns. It's the same with Vem braces and leg armor. If you are not really, if you don't really know how to make, let's say, this belt, you will wrap yourself with the foil. You will wrap yourself with the paper tape. Then you will draw the shape in front of the mirror. You will say, "Oh, that's good," and then you cut and you cut and you have even good proportions because this is made on your own body, so you don't need to measure it. I mean, you can, you can add this additional three or five centimeters. Um, thinking about the thickness of the foam, that will make it a bit shorter when you will make it round. But basically, this is the, I think, easiest way. Yeah, there's another question. Hi, uh, I wanted to ask, uh, how do you make the, the mask for the, like the superhero mask? Uh, which exactly superhero? Like, for example, like the arrow has that. Uh, yes. Mask, uh, like that. Mm -hmm. So uh, this mask actually is made by EVA foam, and um, you can. I mean, I did the masks too, and there are two different ways. Uh, first one is to make the. To. Uh, I actually tried once with making the helmet, I wrapped my head with the foil and with the paper tape and I did the holes for the eyes and then I tried to draw something. This is one way to make a nice pattern. The second way is to measure the size, you know, between here, measure the size of your eye and measure this part. Then try to put these points on paper and try to make it proportional. Um, oh, that's also, I think, important that if you know, don't know the proportions, you can, for example, oh, when there are characters with the, uh, let's say, weapons or something, you can measure the height of the character on the screen, like it's, it's two centimeters. And the weapon, the spear, has three centimeters. So if I have this height, the weapon should be this height. So proportions. The same you can do with the mask. See the character and like see the oh the mask is one fourth of his head, so it will have to be let's say that quick because that's uh, thi that's uh, white because this is the thickness of my head, so this is how you can do it, and then when you will draw the shape on paper, cut out the shape, uh, cut out this from the paper and try to put it uh, on your face in front of the mirror to see if it fits. Sometimes really helpful because you don't see everything is to ask your, I don't know if you have maybe siblings or p parents, like, do you think it's straight? And they will say probably, oh, I think you should have it lower or more up and, uh, or smaller holes for the eyes. So the advices are really important. And after you have this shape, after you modify the pattern a bit, you can try again. And if you will be happy with it, you can transfer it to the foam. Uh, like, did you use three, three millimeters foam for the mask? So you can, I think three millimeters is the best way because two is too, too thin and it will be really too thin. And five, it's really, it will be visible. So three, three millimeters is enough thick for the mask. Uh, then you can cut it out. And basically to have the a bit round shape, you can use the heat gun and try to form it with your hands. Like if you know in this part should be your nose, and you can try to make it more pop with your fingers. It's something, it's a bit like sculpting, but you can't really sculpt it because it's not that uh, easy. But I think like you can shape it a bit knowing how your, your face looks like. Um, so this is the way, and then you just you can sand the edges. You can add the, uh, you can cut the lines with the cutter to have the pattern, uh, which is in the reference picture. And of course, you will need something to attach this mask. So one solution is to have the uh, like a elastic string 
that will be attached to one part and the second, so you will put it on your head. But it will be visible, and there are characters like, uh, let's say, Black Canary, and you don't see, no, Black Canary? The other one. The other one from Arrow, the black, I don't remember the name. Oh, let's say Nightwing. Nightwing has the mask and you don't see the, the string going around his head. So this way you can use the glue for the body, which is called Mastix. And I always recommend it because Mastix will not only glue well the foam, but will also stick really well to your, uh, to your face. The only problem is that if you're sweating, if it's really hot, it can fall because it's getting more wet, more and more wet. But for cool weather or for uh, air conditioned room, it's it's good. If you don't have the mastics, which you can, I think only buy online, uh, you can use a lash glue, but don't use the black one because there's the black one there and there's the white one. Use the white uh, a lash glue to put uh, on the mask and then glue on your. Um, on your skin. There are also other solutions, like if you, if you can't glue it to your face, if you need to use the string, and the character doesn't have the string, but has nice hair, you can cover the strings with the pieces of hair, you know, like let them go on your face to cover this part. And then of course you will have to prime it and paint it. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? Uh, there is a girl. Uh, it's about masks again. Uh, if you were to create a Batman cowl, would you make it with EVA foam again? What exactly? Um, Batman's uh, mask cowl. Batman, yeah, yeah. Would yeah. you make it with EVA foam again or use another material? Um, I actually have seen many people doing the Batman masks and many of them use different techniques. Actually, it depends on the design because some of the Batman masks are really uh, like armor, you know, so you can make it out of EVA foam if you see the segments and uh, you will know that you have, you can cut out these segments and put together and it's thick. And uh, this is one way. And yes, I think if it would be armor version of Batman, I would use EVA foam. Thermoplastics not, because I think in most of the parts you don't, use, you don't need the thermoplastics and also it would be really heavy. Um, but uh, many people used to do the Batman mask out of uh, latex, which is really complicated and I never did that and I only worked with latex a bit, so I can't say that much because it's, it's complicated, but basically it, uh, it the, it, you need to sculpt, you need to have the base of your head, the shape of your head, you need to sculpt the, uh, the, uh, the shape with the clay, and then you make the negative, you make the molds, and then you can make it out of latex or resin or other stuff. But um, it's really complicated, and I think only prop makers do it, because like normal cosplayers, and especially the beginners, it's too hard and it can be expensive. So I think the armor version with EVA foam is the nice solution. Um, the other option is to make it with, uh, for example, fabric. I used to, I, I saw some people making it with fabric and then put uh, pieces of foam to make some, like the, the ears or the front more thick. Yeah. Thank you. Any other questions that there is a guy? Hello. A um, couple of questions, actually. I'm wondering uh, what kind of paints do people generally use to paint uh, specific parts of the armor or uh, the headband or the hero mask or whatever, like metallic uh, paints? so that it shines off in need for an applied gloss. Oh, it, stuff like that. It's a pity you didn't attend our panel because we have a panel especially about that. We had a panel about painting EVA foam, but it's okay. Uh, we use uh, for cosplay, for masks, we use, uh, you need the primer, first of all, to put on the material. And the primers we use is wood glue, is Plasti-Dip, which is the gum in a spray. 
Uh, the other one is flexi paint, which you can buy online, and uh, roof primers, which you can buy in a construction store. You need many layers. When it dries, you use usually uh, as a base um, like color spray paints. It depends what color is it. If it's black, you just use black spray paint. And then with the acrylic colors, oh, it's acrylic spray paint. So then you can use acrylic colors with the brush to make the details, to make the shadows, to make the highlights. Um, some people use oil paints, which are really nice, but they dry for quite a long time. So uh, you can use it too. And they are, I think they are not that flexible as acrylics. Uh, so yeah, basically I use acrylics every time and they work quite well and they are not so expensive. Okay, so basically, uh, depending on what you want to look like uh, when you do painting for the specific part of the armor, then you should use it like a primer. Uh, but do you guys use sanding after you put the primer on the armor? Oh, it, it depends, because if you, uh, if you have edges that are not like straight, they are a bit like... That it's not like just after cutting it's not ready and you need to sand the edges you need to make some details with the um, other other pieces of foam which you need to sand again uh, yes we sand it with a dremel with a small sanding tool um, then you can also use sanding paper especially I use always san sanding paper if I have uh, big pieces of armor made of uh, warbla which is a thermoplastic which, is, which uh, surface is really irregular. So then I use uh, sanding paper, then I use primer, like three or five or even six layers of primer. I use uh, wood glue mixed with a bit of water, and then you can paint it with the acrylic spray paints and then make the details with acrylics. As I said before, it's not so easy to buy EVA foam, and most of that you can buy online. Uh, but the little pieces, like if you want to make a mask, it's totally okay to try to find it in an art store in your city, because in art stores they, they don't have it. Because in Poland we have it, like in A5 or A3 sizes. But if I need like a lot, I just ordered it online. And in Poland, we have producers, but I guess in, in, on Cy in Cyprus, it's not that easy and they don't really produce it here. So the only solution is to find suppliers in Europe that ship to Cyprus. And there are some, but you can order also order that from uh, Amazon or AliExpress. And they usually have it uh, like half of the meter and half of the meter uh, sheets and you order a few. Uh, for mask, the three millimeters thickness is fine. And me, I always, almost always use high density foam, and it's like one uh, hundred uh, kilograms per uh, per meter, meter, meter. You know, how is that called? Squ not square meter, but cube, cube for the cube for one meter cube, and. Uh, yeah, so high density foam is good because it's really uh, durable and tough. But some for, for some soft pieces, you can use like lower density foam. And um, there's also foam called Plastazot, which I actually, I think I use it. And um, it's really similar, but it's the, a bit of the azote is added, so it's more durable, it's easy to work with. Uh, so you just you just need to find it the supplier in your uh, that that gives that ships it to your country to your city. As I said, unfortunately, it's a bit hard. Uh, hopefully, in Poland we have two online stores. One is in Warsaw, the capital. One is in the other city, and they ship things to most of the countries in Europe. So uh, I think you will find some someone who ships to to Cyprus. Um, so yes, high density foam is one solution and it's my favorite. But you can work also with thermoplastics. Uh, and for example, I did once a mask with thermoplastics and warbla, which you uh, form with the heat gun and has to be hot to change the shape. It's really sticky. I uh, heat up the s uh, small part and I put on my face. Like, I know it sounds horrible, but I could touch it and I could feel if the temperature is high or not. And when it was like, let's say, 
36 degrees, so it was still fine. It didn't uh, burn me. I put that and I tried to shape it on my face and you, have, you get the really perfect shape of your face, which you can later modify and do some things. But Wordla, as I said, has a regular structure, so you'll have to sand it, prime many times, and then paint. Okay, thank you. There have. Uh, if, you're, if, you, if your character, for example, have really wavy or curly hair, it's quite easy to find on the internet matching wig. Usually, uh, wigs you can already style uh, you can have al buy already styled, still stylized, by uh, companies. So if the wig is curly, you can try to find curly wig. Wavy, you can try to find wavy wig. But sometimes it happens that you just count because the, uh, because the hairstyle is really complicated. So uh, the way to style it. Um, what exactly would you like to know? The spikes. Okay, so uh, if the character has spikes, uh, you can. You, you will have to buy the wig in a good color. The most important is to uh, try to find it straight because the spikes have the straight, straight edges. Um, but if you will buy the curly one in the right color, you will need to use the hair straightener to make them straight. And uh, for that, uh, you will have to check if the wig is uh, heat resistant. And if not, you can use the uh, hair straightener on a really low temperature or even uh, turn it off and wait a moment so it will be colder to try to straighten it. So when you have the wig that is ready for spikes, if there are really thick spikes, you can use as a base uh, polystyrene, which is really light and you can buy in every construction store. You can use a cutter to make the shape out of the uh, polystyrene piece, and if you have the spike, you can attach to your, you can like brush the, the hair on the back, then attach to your wig with um, hot glue. I think hot glue would be the best solution, or yeah, hot glue basically. Or you can try to do it with polys, um, yeah, well, no, hot glue is the best solution. And then uh, you can try to glue the pieces of hair on this spike. The other solution is to divide the wig on pieces and do this spike separately, glue every uh, wall of this spike with the hair, and then when you have the hairy spike, to attach it on your wig. Um, if you can also make, if these are small spikes, are really and really irregular, like they are not perfect, you can just do it with hairspray, uh, but really strong hairspray. You need to brush it, use the hairspray, wait till it dries, then again, again, and again, till you have the nice spike. But also some people use wood glue to make the spikes on a wig, uh, which is nice, but wood glue in a lot, uh, in big quantity, is a bit, has the color of, the, is a bit white, so it will be visible. But if you use a small quantity, it will be not, and it glues really well the wig. For example, people who make uh, cosplays from World of Warcraft, and they have these weird eyebrows, they basically cut the pieces of the wig, use wood glue to glue these pieces, and then when it dries, it's basically really a uh, tough piece of hair. So you can use hairspray, wood glue, and also the the base from the uh, polystyrene and then glue the, uh, the edges and everything with the hair. I really needed it to make this cosplay and I didn't find any so I had to use other materials. Yeah, I, I mentioned that before. Uh, actually, it's not possible to buy Warbla in uh, stores in the city. I know one in Germany, but at all. So you need to order that online and you need to find the uh, stores in Europe that ship it to Cyprus. Basically, if you Warbla, if you want Warbla, if you, and if you enter the Warbla.com page, you have the suppliers in uh, suppliers in Europe, and you can see if there are any in your country. So I am sure there are, and you need to just order that online because it's not possible to buy it, you know, in a construction store or art store, unfortunately. Okay, thank you. No problem. Any other questions? 
Okay. If you want, I can talk a bit about the photo shoots and performances because this is always really stressful if you never did the, if you did the cosplay for the first time and you want to enter the competition and you're stressed, you're not sure what to do. Um, basically, really important about the contests is to read all the rules of the contest because sometimes uh, when I judge, there are people who enter the contest, they have something that uh, is not good with the rules of the contest and they seem like they don't know what's going on. So it's really important to see, for example, if the costume have to be, has to be 80% handmade or if it can be 50% handmade, because some of the pieces you can already buy, like the clothes or, or uh, other things. Uh, so this is really important. And um, I think most of the people are stressed, so it's totally normal. Uh, but what is important, for uh, most of the cosplay contests, the performance means a lot. So you need to take your time to prepare it. You need to find the right music, and you also should read how long your performance should be. Usually it's like about one minute. So try to edit your music, try to add dialogues. What I always say, to have a good performance, try to tell a story, try to be funny. For some characters it doesn't fit, I know. But funny is, usually, is the easiest way to uh, make the, uh, the audience smile. So it's a good solution. And uh, third option is to make really uh, like serious emotional performance with really good uh, face expressions because it always we really we see the judges see that and this is really impressive as well. Um, so yeah, try to find the music, try to think about your performance. You need to know the character to make the matching performance. You need to know its story. So take your time to read about the character. Um, next step, when you enter the stage. For example, if there happens something that wasn't planned, like a piece of your costume will fall, don't grab it back. Like People sometimes have the pauldrons or something and then it falls, and then they stop the performance, and they are taking this piece. Don't do it, because then we see that you, like, you don't care about your performance, but you care about this piece. And the point is, we're judging your acting. So at this moment, if the pieces fall, I know it, it happens, it's, it's sad. Try to make it like it was intended, like I just fall, and that was, uh, that, this is what I was going to do. Uh, what's the time? Uh, this is also important to not to show that you're distracted by the things that are going on on stage, but we really focused on what you are doing and what was your plan. And the really also important thing is when there is a dialogue in the performance, you need to remember to move your mouth, to do the lip sync, the same as it is on a on dialogue. Because there are sometimes people who come to the stage, they have really nice dialogue, and they just stand, and they do nothing, they don't even move their mouth. So it just looks really bad. So these are, I think, simple advices. And also really helpful are, helpful are props on a stage. So if the character has a story where, let's say, he has a... Um, like he finds the treasures or something. You can put these treasures on a stage and do something with them. So the props on the stage are really important because they help you to move on a stage, to know where to go and to create a story. So this is the thing. Uh, you can also ask for helpers to be, uh, to be on the stage with you, but they are basically not performing, but they are used to do something. Um, what's next? Um, Entering the competitions, of course, reading the rules. Um, I think the other uh, point is that many people are stressed to go to the conventions because they are afraid of critics. And this is the thing I will always disagree because people say, oh, but there are so many haters and everything. That's not true. So many people are happy to see cosplays, even if it's not perfect. 
Remember that hundreds of these people never did any cosplay and they are happy to see you in your cosplay. They are happy to see their favorite character and they are still impressed by your work and other cosplayers are really happy to see new cosplayers too. Like we're such a really family community. We like to see new members, we want to support each other. So if, if you are afraid, you should try to uh, maybe find friends who will go with you to this convention to not to be alone. And then you will see that we're really open and real nice. So if you're first time in a cosplay and want to go to the convention, try to be open-minded and you will, I, I bet you will enjoy that. Yeah, I think it's time to end. So if anyone has any other questions, it's last time for questions. Okay. Oh, there's one. I just wanted to ask, actually, um, would you always like prefer to do costumes that complement your body, or like characters that you like mostly? Um, I, you mean the body type, for example? I often get this question actually at the panels, and. I will always say that the most important is how you feel with your own body. Uh, and the point is, if you are, for example, super skinny and you want to be more round and you want to feel more healthy, do it besides the cosplay, uh, just to feel better. But if you are afraid, for example, that you are too short, that uh, let's say you are too tall, that you, your face is too feminine for a male character, I think you shouldn't worry about that. Of course, most of the people look sometimes, uh, uh, they, they are happy to see someone who looks more like the character. But the point is, you do cosplay for yourself. And you, when you stand in front of the mirror, you say, whoa, I look so nice and I'm so happy I made this. So this is the most important. And the point is, even like, Nobody's perfect, like come on, everyone has like something like short legs, like I don't know, short arms, or like dif different uh, face shape from the character. The point is, I think even still most of the people wouldn't notice that, or even if they will, they will still take more attention to your costume than to what shape of the legs you have. And um, like, if I would be super skinny and I would do Wonder Woman, I think I just wouldn't care and I would still do Wonder Woman because I love her character and I like this, this uh, her personality and I do it for myself. But it's also a thing that you need to uh, try with your own. It's not like if you don't have uh, confidence in your body, you need to uh, just uh, maybe find a costume that will hide your imperfections. Like, for example, I don't like my stomach, so I only sometimes make cosplays with the uh, visible stomach, but usually if you use corset, you can really nicely hide the imperfections. So we can, the cosplay is really good thing because you can find characters matching to your body type, but also you can hide your imperfections. So, for example, if there are really big characters, really tall, uh, you can, if you're really tall, you can find really tall character. If you're small, like I'm short, and I did the Hobbit cosplay from Road of the Rings, because I tried, because I thought, hmm, that will match me, match my body type, and okay, somehow it did. Uh, and uh, you can also hide some things, like for cross-plays. If the girl is making male cosplay, and if the guy is making female cosplay. For the guy, if he wants to cosplay a girl, he can, of course, uh, put something into the, the fake, fake bra or something to make, uh, to make chest and to make better proportions. If the girl wants to make the male cosplay, she can do, use the makeup to make the face look more manly. And uh, there are many techniques to look more like the character. But basically some things you can't change. And one thing is that if you don't feel comfortable, if you're sure that we, you will not feel comfortable, don't do it. Like there are, for example, like if the costume is really is showing a lot of body and from one side you like the character, but you know that if you will show a lot of body at the convention, you will not feel comfortable. Don't do it. 
because you will feel bad and you eventually will not be happy with what you did. So always do something that you're comfortable with. And uh, as I said, also you can find the character that will match your body type. So if someone, for example, uh, is uh, a bit bigger, is a bit fat, there are still many wonderful characters that match this kind of body type. And they are, and I'm sure many people will love it. Like I have a friend, a guy who is actually really tall and he's really fat. And one year ago he did uh, Obelix cosplay from Asterix and Obelix. And he looked wonderful. Like I think uh, sl really slim and skinny Obelix would be okay too. I would appreciate the work on the costume, but it's not the same. It's not the same impression. So you can always find the character that will match your body type and nobody will criticize because in this situation you look like the character and this is what makes people smile and they feel big respect to you. Thank you. Okay. So I guess we're going to finish. So thank you so much for attending the panel. I'm at my booth in the other hall and I have also my uh, business card. So if you want to contact with me later on Facebook, on Instagram, or just write an email with some questions, with you, we have doubts, you can message me. So again, thank you so much for attending. Um,